you. So it is really a great pleasure being here. And thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, Miggy, for inviting us. So Professor Xing will be sharing the screen. And uh, so she will do, be showing a lot of the files and the process that she's using for her class. And um, I'm here to provide entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like um, Mickey was talking about, feel free to use the chat box, feel free to use the Q&A. And uh, I guarantee, I'm not gonna guarantee any answers for that, but I will do my best to try. And if you answer a question I can quickly answer, I will chat, uh, I will send back in the chat or in the Q&A box. And uh, but, so if you see me typing, trust me, I'm not emailing, I'm not Facebooking, I'm focusing on this. So we want to keep this presentation interactive and fun. So I'm going to share a couple of fun facts about Professor Xin. So Professor Xin is one of the best designers that I have worked with. She has won over 30 design awards in the past five years. And fun fact. Professor Shin and I actually went to Pratt Institute around the same time, but we didn't know each other until she started working here at FIT. Thanks for the introduction. I'd like to share a fun fact about Professor Ye first. He is a great karaoke singer. And I also like to take this opportunity to congratulate him. He is publishing his 10th book this November. Double digits, that's enough for me. <laughs> This is a rough outline for our presentation today. And after the introduction, we'll discuss the definition. Then we'll introduce our pedagogy and teaching environment. Then we'll take a deep dive into how we structure the course files, as well as showing you some student work. Before we do that, a brief introduction of our subject area, which is called creative technology and design. We serve required courses to nine different majors at FIT. So that's about 25 classes per semester, 600 students per semester on the credit side. We also have 14 certificate programs, which include UX, UI, data-driven design. A lot of students that I saw are saying hi in the chat, they are from the certificate programs. Our BFA program is called Advertising and Digital Design. Although FIT is known for fashion, for very good reason, a very good fashion school, we're actually also a pioneer in integrating advertising design and digital design. So we're one of the first to introduce courses such as user experience design. We wrote that way back in 2010, kinetic typography, digital product design. And I'm also happy to share that we are actually ranked number four design program in the United States by the One Club of Creativity this year. As mentioned earlier, our design studio is called Cinda Media Lab. We specialize in dynamic branding, which means branding with a special focus on screen-based media, UX design, UI design, and motion graphics. So just to show you a few projects to get you a sense of where we're coming from, this is one of our most award-winning projects, which is a rebranding of this legendary company called Gong. Gong was the first company in the United States to design and create plush toy but they struggle a little bit in the digital age. So our new branding system helped them transition into the world of e-commerce. And we quadrupled their social media following within 18 months, and that's all uh, organic, meaning no pay for these, uh, these social following growth. And this is one of our most recent award-winning project. And this gala invite design focuses on the timeless design fundamentals such as line, shape, color, and balance. This design received the first place award in the 2021 print design competition, which was sponsored by Adobe. And this is a multilingual responsive website for a tech company in Taiwan. This is a touchscreen kiosk that we designed for WeWork when they opened a new location in New York City a couple of years ago. This is a teaching and learning platform that we created for MIT. Later in the presentation, I will introduce some of the other features. What you're seeing right now on screen is what we call a smart schedule, which actually uh, triggered by time, it depends on your location, will give you the information that you needed to keep you on track. So let's do a little bit of a definition so we're all on the same page. So what is systems thinking? 
systems thinking means different thing in different fields. Originally, it was from engineering field. But overall, it is a holistic mindset towards problem solving, which really means not seeing a problem as an isolated event. The goal is to broaden our perspective to understand the root causes as well as the impact on the other parts of the system. That, uh, that's what we meant by a holistic view. So for today's discussion, the most important thing is what, uh, why? Why the, do designers need to know systems thinking? It was or originated by, uh, from the engineering field. We believe it is actually very important on several levels. First of all, on the micro level, systems thinking help designers understand the interrelationship design, uh, between design elements. That's more of a classic view of it, which is very important still. But that, uh, for digital design, we need to go a little further than that. So on the meso level, systems thinking help designers understand the how, the when, the why, and the where the user interact with your design. And this is the user-centered approach that our industry is mostly focusing on right now. However, we do believe the next level is to take this concept to a macro level, which means it's not just the individual user, it's this whole group of user. How do we address them as a part of a larger ecosystem rather than just everyone at the center of their own thing? So just a few examples to show how we help students establish this type of systems thinking mindset. For UX design, we focus on process, we focus on ideation. So here on the screen, you see a few artifacts such as affinity map, persona, journey map, and task flow. All these are unique to the UX design process. For UI design, our students learn how to establish a design system that can respond to different platforms. So different sizes, different use cases, how do we respond to that and still keep it consistent and user-friendly? And we recently realized that one of the best way to keep students understand system thinking is actually asking them to design their own typefaces. Because UX and UI, a lot of the time is very, uh, it's very abstract. For typeface, if they have to design their own typeface, this will help them to see how shapes and lines become characters and characters become words and words become sentences. And from the micro level, this really helped them to start seeing the interrelationship between these design elements. And these are expressive typefaces designed for screen. So of course, motion and inter even interactivities are also part of the system. And um, look at this, isn't that fun? It is. So this is a unique and playful typeface designed by one of our students. So this, here is this typeface in motion as a 3D object. So we want, again, going back to system thinking, how that becomes a set and unique in its own way. And this next colorful typeface is appropriately named fluorescence. So now let's talk about our teaching environment. We utilize several platforms and tools for our trademark pedagogy, which we call SC Rail. That stands for synchronous and collaborative remote experiential learning. And Zoom is our main video conferencing tool. And we want to make our classroom active and engaging, especially for the Gen Z students. So we often start our classes with a show and tell. And here on the screen, you see every participant are uh, sharing their favorite video game, including myself, bragging about my <laughs> glorious day of playing Diablo 2. For teamwork and communication, we use Slack because it is the industry standard. We do a lot of group projects. As you can see from the screen, we create team channels so they can work closely with their teammates. As Professor Ye mentioned, we like to use the Gen Z language to engage them. So even for simple things like group review, we ask them to sign up with the emojis. Figma, of course, it is our main design tool. We like it because of its real-time uh, collaboration capability. It is such a great platform. Now, Figma is my virtual office and classroom. Here on my screen, you can see how I organize my Figma space. 
What you see under UX and UI are my teaching materials. Everything is color coded based on the subject. Here is the team space for my UI design certificate program students. And here is the team space for all of my spring 2021 PFA classes. I will show you the projects and files from a, a few classes later. And this is one of our new favorite, FigGem. We think this is a great tool for brainstorming and virtual critique. There are some really fun features on FigGem what we that we love, such as uh, stamps, emojis, and components. And I cannot wait for the high five, uh, high five feature. All these are helping us achieve our goal, which is to bring human dynamics into our online collaboration. And this is our virtual campus, and we use this platform called Gather. And Gather is a proximity-based communication platform, meaning unlike Zoom, you're on, you're off, right? And you can actually walk up to people and talk to them like in real life, which also means, of course, students walk away and hide from you. And we, I, we want to embrace that. We want to embrace a sense of community and space. So on, on Gather, we build this fun space and uh, with student lounges and tree houses. We even have a bathroom just in case our student needs to buy a break. And this is another feature that we use a lot on the remote learning platform that we built for MIT, Batch Maker and the Team School Board. Research shows Gen Z students really enjoy friendly competition and micro uh, achievements. And we recently published our SC Rail remote learning playbook. So if you're interested, at the end of the presentation, there will be our email. So please feel free to contact us afterwards or contact Miki if you like a digital copy. Now we are going to show, show you some projects and student work from UI Design Certificate Program, Design Systems for UX and UI class, and our senior portfolio classes. The first one is from our UI Design Certificate Program. This is a eight week intensive program that meets twice a week. The methodology for this program is based on atomic design. We teach our students the conceptual principles of a systems thinking for UI design. Atoms are the basic building blocks. And molecules are groups of atoms bonded together. They are the smallest fundamental units of a compound. Organisms are groups of molecules joined together to form a relatively complex and distinct sections of an interface. Templates consist of groups of organisms stitched together to form pages. So I'm going to switch out of the presentation and show you how I set up the UI design program, students workflow and the final presentation. The assignment is a responsive e-commerce website. Students work solo in this uh, certificate program. So let's go to the file. Okay, here, as you can see, this is my virtual office. You can see all the lectures are organized by uh, subject. And now I'm going to the UI design section. So here, this UI design team includes three projects here. Um, the first one is the teachers only. So if I go here, you can see all my lectures. Um, this, uh, this teachers only section is important because I can make adjustment to the lectures or demos before I distribute them. The second is course materials. All students in the program can view but cannot edit. Besides the lectures, I have this file which shows the workflow for the entire semester. Starting from the project brief on the left side to competitors analysis and wireframe, all the way to the end, which are the design system and the final presentation. Also, I have uh, some additional examples as you can see here. So they have a clear guidance at each step. 
The third one is third is the student space. So each student can work on their own project in this space and discuss with their uh, classmates. Here I am showing one student uh, one student project that is still in progress. As you can see from the left panel here, uh, this workflow reflects what I set up in the project file. So start with a project brief, as you can see here, and competitors analysis. So they know more about their competitors and wireframe. Oh, it's a little delayed. So wireframe they can actually develop the content here. So learn, uh, study the current website and they can build their own content. I see a lot of the comments as in the, in the chat and people are amazed by how clean and structured you are. I'm telling you, <laughs> Professor Ching is the most organized designer ever. I think on the face of the earth. She actually had to clean her workspace and wash her hand before she started doing anything. <laughs> And the, the way she structured the course is actually critical, especially in the remote learning environment. We are not limiting students' uh, the creativity. So later you'll see every single project is very different, but they go through the process. So they know they, where, they, where they are in the process. And also one other thing I really am impressed by looking at Professor Shin's class files, there are a lot of discussions. So every single thing, that the student is putting down the button, a shape, a line. There needs to be a reason to support it because we are not designing for just design sake. And these designs are really uh, needed there to help the user to solve a problem. So that kind of communication, I, I was really always very impressed. Yeah. So I, once I, they. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, can I, can I just throw in a thing? Yeah. The one thing that I really love about these is just the amount of like intentionality. Um, you know, the students aren't just designing for design's sake. They're they're really letting you know and and demonstrating, you know, like their thoughts, their ideas. And it's great how you can just kind of pop in and see. Um, somebody hopped in here really quick. And I, I mean, I'm just gonna ask this. They they were just wondering if you provide any like templates available, like in your like Figma community files um, to share for the public. Um, I published the tem uh, template for resume uh, structure, which I'm going to show you. But for class, I didn't publish them yet. Cool. And I just want to like confirm. So, um, so the, this structure right here, where over on the left you have the pages. I see the cover, project brief, competitor analysis. So this is like a blank kind of template you provide the students, and then they kind of through their 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 own progression, they, they kind of like fill that out and they're, they're kind of like separate assignments? Sure. Um, yeah. As I briefly showed you in the course material, mm -hmm. students start with this file. So awesome. this file, as you can see, cover, they can design the way they want. They are showing their personal, you know, expression in, in this area and the project brief. So I give a little more instruction what they need to include. What do you mean by brand selection? What do you mean by project brief? So I give a little description and also in the separate file, I show the examples. So they can see some of the examples so they can uh, design their own. And for example, competitors analysis, please do minimum three. And a wireframe, you know, you can have a small kit that they can start because they are starting, they are learning the design in Figma for the first time. And also a mood board that I can start with a frame so they kind of know where to start. So it's not like template, template, but I'm giving them a little bit of guidance. Yeah, no, this is, this is absolutely great. Like, I think it's everything that students need because it really, um, you know, they are then able to like kind of grow and, and modify it on their own as they see the process fits. But yeah, I absolutely love the annotations and the way that they go here. And especially in the cover that you took the opportunity for them to put like a little emoji. I really like that personalization. And I think that like, you know, in the time of like hybrid classrooms and like virtual classrooms, I think that that little bit of personalization uh, really helps. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And once they have a content in place, they start to 
explore their design direction. So they work with the uh, uh, mood board. So when they're uh, uh, building the mood board, they learn more about the brand. So they, uh, they study the archetype and come up with the adjectives that they can explain their brand and uh, create the collective uh, inspirational visuals, as you can see here, and collecting the uh, explore the types and other uh, typeface and other things. So based on the mood board, they really dig deeper with the, their design direction. So as you can see, there's a tons of different screen, uh, a lot of screens here. So looking at the mood board and they are building their design, they are creating their UI design uh, with their wireframe. So she went through several iteration, as you can see, and after discussion, a lot of discussion, a lot of iteration, this is a kind of final look that she was um, uh, deciding to move forward. So you can, uh, she can uh, finalize the design here and then go to UI design direction, uh, design uh, page. So this is, um, as of now, finalized refined design in mobile. And once you're done with the design, I recommend to go, uh, go to the prototype section. So not only looking at the design as a 2D, but they can actually see the prototyping. So they can uh, validate their design by uh, building the, testing the prototype. So in our program, we teach responsive design and we do mobile first. So they start with a mobile and then they go back to the wireframe. And, uh, and continue to develop wireframe for desktop. So they have a good understanding, good content and design direction, and then go to the, the uh, desktop wireframe. And once they are done with the wireframe, they can continue to design, uh, go back to UI design, and they can uh, continue to work on the desktop UI design. And same deal, after that, they uh, test and validate their design uh, with a prototyping. And once they have a UI design for mobile and desktop, and they collect all the component and foundation, including typography, type scale, and color, build a design system, and uh, prepare the final presentation. This uh, example is a current student's example. So we are in the process. So I would like to show you the final presentation file as a separate. So this is a, one of the final presentation. Of course, um, this is done uh, in Figma as well. So I can uh, walk through. So this is a responsive design as well. Start with the mood board and you can see all the inspiration and mobile design. And also in the um, uh, Figma presentation file, we also link the prototype, um, prototype uh, mobile version. So you can see how you can uh, click through. I'm not going to click through all the designs here, but I like to you know, let you know how you can present uh, UI design. And then showing the, some of the key screens and I really want to add to this, uh, even though we are giving them the process, but that process is really just some milestones that they need to hear, uh, that they need to hit. But that's not in any way limiting their creativity at all. From throughout the uh, pr presentation, you'll see every single project is uniquely different because that's what we want our student to be able to do. We want them to really exercise their design vision. So that's, uh, that's one point that I want to emphasize. In the later part, as you can see, we put all together as a design system. And this kind of system thinking is actually one thing that's quite unique and different from the more traditional, let's say graphic design, not good or bad, it's not comparing in that way, but it's different in that sense, because you have to be able to create those components, which later will be composed into something. It's a different approach and process, which is quite interesting. So we have a uh, we have a question. Um, so someone asked if uh, like you you work with actual libraries. So like do you create libraries of the workflow components um, that you're using, like the comments uh, for your students? Um, for this project, it's a little bit hard to uh, um, the work with the library because everybody work as a solo. So they don't see the benefit of the having a library, but the next project that I'm going to show you that you can see how the, the how they students are utilizing the library and use the single source of truth. 
But in this project, they uh, especially um, the beginners are taking this class. So they have a good understanding of the design system and building the component library more likely, but they start to learn how they can document. So I just answered some questions quickly mm -hmm. uh, on the chat and they asked about the class size, I said 25, which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second class that I am introducing as an example is the design systems for UX and UI. And Nikki, this is the class that I'm going to go over the library. This is a junior class in our BFA program. And tw uh, this twice a week class is ambitious. We start with the UX research and ideation process. Then we move on to UI design. At the end, each team creates a multi-platform design system. I just want to quickly answer Stephanie's questions over here. She's asking about components. And that's actually one thing we want to cover. And we don't have them create component first and design. That's not how we approach it. It's really an iterative process. They explore the design and then at the end collect the components into the design system, which is how we do it in the, in the industry anyway. It's not a waterfall process. And I will show you some examples as well. Okay, for this class, we utilize a modified design thinking framework, as you can see on this screen. Uh, we go through an iterative process of discover, define, idea, design, and delivery. Similar to the previous class, I will show you my class setup as well as the workflow and student work. So let's go. Uh, uh, before we go to the, the file, I like to explain a little bit of the process because it's like really huge class, a huge project. So we start with a UX research. This is how I set up a UX research file for a student. Again, similar to UI design, but the page contents are different. For this class, each team is required to design digital product with a minimum of a three different touch point. So before they propose their work, they start with the user research, start from the persona affinity mapping and uh, all these uh, mapping techniques and come up with a, a problem statement and how might we question. And at the end, after the, the user research, they propose um, product design ideas. And this is the example, such as an app, a website and an in-flight entertainment system. The final deliverables are a design system and a final presentation, which includes a case study video. So I'm going to go back to file and I will show you the Teams file here. Just when you're getting ready for that, uh, a couple of questions came up. They're asking about the class specifically. So the first class that Professor Shin show, each student is designing individually uh, so that they work on uh, themselves. And also that one example that you show through the process, that's actually continue at class. So that's a week class and we meet twice a week. And right now this project that Professor Shin, uh, Professor Shin is showing is our BFA class, which is 15 weeks class. And in this particular class, we ask them to design teams. So we work as a team and this is the team space. And that's why I divide it uh, like this, team one, team two, team three. So each team most of the time consists of four or three students. And you can see the first file, which is the UX research. Here in this file, on the left side, you can see all the structures. So they start the project, they initiate the project, and then they develop the persona, uh, pro persona in the beginning. And they do a lot of desk research and empathy interview. So they collect all these you know, insights and they discuss and they find the themes and patterns and they summarize uh, the, the, the findings at the end as well. And then uh, they dig deeper more about the, the, uh, the brand and uh, the, the products that they are offering, products and services they are offering. And after that, they really want to know more about their persona. So they uh, do the empathy mapping 
And after empathy mapping, the persona becomes more solid. So they really enhance the persona, which is a qualitative, qualitative persona or a comprehensive persona we call. And after uh, we have a clear idea about ideas about uh, our user, and we try to understand the human behavior. That's what we are doing, experience map. And after experience map, and we do journey map. This is like ultimate understanding of your uh, user. So you try to go through what the user is going through. So you really want to find users' needs and goals and pain point. So after these uh, discovery phase, the students were able to um, uh, articulate the problem statement, as you can see here. And uh, based on the problem statement, they generate ideas. Um, and uh, using the how might we question, and they start to um, questioning, think about the solution and idea, ideate phase. So as you can see here, again, not only the design, but with the process, UX process, there's the tons of discussion back and forth. And they're voting about their ideas. As you can see here, we sometimes use the emoji or the stickers to discuss about those things. All those based on the opportunities, they go to the idea generation. So again, we are utilizing the affinity mapping method. So you can see all the, um, the uh, ideas, then they can again uh, discuss, not only just generating that always the discussion part is coming afterwards. And after these ideas uh, generation uh, phase, they really try to put uh, uh, the solution together. So they are working on the MVP, um, as you can see here. And then after MVP, they articulate the opportunity statements. So you can really see, not only just thinking about the how might we, but we think about the opportunity. And also we think about how this opportunity solution helps uh, users' needs and users' pain point. So that's the process. And after all these things, they stu students put together the proposal. So in this pro proposal, based on their users, you know, pain and need and a uh, goal that you can see all the product and um, the features that they are proposing. So uh, quickly, a few questions flying in here. And the uh, San Diego was asking about how does that relate to the topic, which is system thinking. Now in the UI, uh, in the UX process, like what we are doing, talking about right here, it's really about understanding. It is just not that one interface you're designing. You understand the entire journey. That's what the journey map is. And then also you switch your perspective from the designer perspective to the user designer uh, perspective. And also someone is asking, can you quickly talk about difference between experience map and uh, journey map? Yes, experience map is a little bit broader. It's about the human behavior. So it doesn't have to be attached to the product that you're designing. Journey map is something that um, I'm designing a Swiss airline app. And I like to observe how the user is using the app uh, done by Swiss airline. That is the journey map. It's really connect with the product. But I like to see how, you know, human is, you know, booking the, the travel. It doesn't mean that I have to use a Swiss airlines app. And that is experience. So here, as you can see, we're tr really on trying to understand the human. And that's why um, user uh, UX design is a human-centered design. OK, so uh, Joy was asking about giving student feedback, which I think you cover quite a bit. And so we do it through Slack. We do it through Zoom, uh, uh, if that's virtual face-to-face. -face, and we do it on the fly as well. And Joshua is asking, each team member creates a unique deliverable at the end. So why do they work in teams? That's a great question because they all work on the same brand. So they do the same research and based on their research, they make sure they identify opportunity in multiple touch points. So each one of them create their own touch point solution, but they are all under the same system. And let's go back to the system thinking. And that's the beauty of design system because it doesn't matter when you develop this design system as a team, everybody should be able to work with that same system regardless what the platform looks like. And I think you will be able to show that quickly right now. Sure, okay. So this is about like one month, uh, one and a half months you know, duration um, in the semester. 
after they propose, based on their proposal, they come up with a website, app, and in-flight entertainment system, for example. So I'm going to show you one of the product, which is in-flight entertainment system. The structure is like this. So task flow here that they already defined the task flow. So based on task flow, they build the content. Um, through the wireframe. So you can see, and once you have a content in place, they have a low fidelity prototype testing. So they can make sure that all the things are working logically. At this point, I want them to go back to the drawing board again, because we have a content, we have a direction, but we don't have a direction for design yet. So I, uh, we create uh, another file called the design system. So everything about the design and style goes uh, stays in this file. So they start with the initial design direction. So they are all the teammates are building their content, whether it's in-flight entertainment system or mobile or website, but they all go here and each members are contributing the design. So they're exploring, again, they have a lot of discussion and voting and decide which direction is the most appropriate for this brand and their strategy. So they have uh, some ideas and how they are going to move forward with their design. And once they're done, they go back Back to their file and they really apply the design to their UI design. So there's a lot of back and forth and that's why we are saying iterative process in, in, in this aspect. So as you can see, after the design, um, the direction, you can see how it's beautifully applied. Yeah, and I really want to emphasize the, the core pieces that's in our pedagogy, which is collaborative and experiential. So collaborative is how in the industry we build our design system, but it's tricky at the same time, right? Because students, each of them should learn, uh, uh, should, should have the learning outcome. So that's why we designed it this way. So they can all contribute to the design system development itself. At the end, they learn how to apply it. And then, so they have a chance to exercise their creative muscle as an individual as well. So it's the balance between the two. And after they are done with the design, of course, you know, we have a different fidelity prototype. So not only the wireframe, but they can also uh, test their design with a prototype. That's a lot of noodles <laughs> making me hungry now. I love to okay. see all those noodles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so each teammate, um, because of time, we're not showing every single uh, project, but you can see the same process. So um, all of the teammates are working on this design and then come back to the design system again, and they really establish the design system, as you can see, with a foundation, typography, type scale. This is for in-flight entertainment device. This is for app. This is for web. So you can see how beautifully they organize their, um, the, the type scale here. When you call this um, beautiful, that means you're a designer. <laughs> <laughs> you really are into that beautiful setup and structure. But I do agree with you, it's quite beautiful because you think typography, some people say typography is typography. No, typography is not typography. Typography being applied to different scenarios and different devices, they are actually quite different. They have to act different, but they also have to act within the same system. I think that's a beautiful challenge. And right here, you can see they starting to collect uh, these components into the component library. And that is another step that we talk to the student about. It's not a waterfall process. You don't design the buttons, then do the design. And you have that exploration process, which is a little messy. And then you starting to figure out the best way to use these ideas that you have. Once you know, you think, you believe you have the right answers, you start collecting them. Well, that's how you grow a design system. And after uh, defining the foundation and component library, as a last stage, they start to put everything together as a documentation. So this is the design system. And as you can see, uh, collecting all those foundation and they include the principles of their design and they are explaining how the brand identity was used in their uh, application here. And the foundation, again, the typography and type scale, as you can see here, and the colors and iconography that they use for different devices here. 
and uh, the, the specification, how they set up the grid system and structure the card system for different devices and buttons. And here they uh, even uh, utilize the variant and they are so excited about using the variant as well. So you can see all different kinds of you know, usage buttons and card, beautifully designed the card and with a different size and different devices, but everything looks cohesive because we are looking at one single source of a truth. So it's, it doesn't look different with the app or web or in-flight uh, system. Everything is under same family. Can you uh, zoom out and scroll up a little bit? Just up, 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 up more. There, there. that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> that, that is excitement right there. It is a hard semester, no doubt about it. It is a very ambitious class, like Professor Shin talked about, six weeks. So you get that idea, get the MVP going, meaning a minimum viable product. And then you actually go down, execute, and create that design system. A lot of questions about how long is this project. So I know they, it, it sounds almost impossible, but 15 weeks, absolutely. But when they go through that process, they feel so accomplished. And you can definitely sense the excitement out of those little sketches they leave. And so last portion of this project that I like to show the final presentation. So design system, system is not the end. They are still working on it. And that's, uh, this is the final uh, case study presentation. So here, they really, really highlight their solutions. But of course, they include a little bit of you know, introduction of the team. Here you can see. Um, and uh, briefly explain the scope of the work and the time frame and process and uh, mentioning briefly mentioning the who are their user and problems and opportunities and project goals and concepts and design principles and then they really go into the the device, the solution part, and how that th these features are helpful to your uh, their user. Can so, you stop at the screen just quickly? Mm -hmm. So you see how they use call out to explain every single one of the design decision. And that's what Mingyu was talking about, design with intent, with a clear purpose, why this button is there and what this button, why this button look like it is. And, or why do we even need a button at all? And all those need to be explained. And um, so you really work your student fingers to the bones. Huh? <laughs> Even the final presentation, you saw iterations and how she approaches it, but the, the end result is beautiful. We're starting to run a little short of time. So do okay. you want to quickly jump to the next example? Sure. Um, okay, so I was, uh, can I show you the little bit of case study video as well? Love to see it. Okay, so I am going to show a little bit of um, uh, the, give you a sense of how they present their final presentation as well. So I like to show you just portion of the, the case study video uh, in this project. So I'm not going to play all, but you can see how everything comes together as a one big project. Yeah, so you really do <laughs> work your students' fingers to the bones. They create case study video. They didn't learn after effect in this class. They learned after effect from my class, which is a premium semester. But the core is in the after effect class, we teach them how to do storytelling. So within 60 seconds to 70 seconds or so, how do you ex explain this thing that you work for 15 weeks on? Right? So how do you highlight those things? And that storytelling capability, we believe is a very important skill for UX and UX designer. And for variation or different approach, I like to briefly show, highlight some of the uh, two projects as well. So the next project is um, MTA project. Yeah, jump to that braille, I love it. Because we talk a lot about inclusivity, we talk about accessibility. So we're really starting to see that student take that into consideration. So design uh, for people with different capabilities. And then uh, one more just quick um, screen that you can see how the students are thinking about different devices, not just the app or web, but think about the kiosk and Apple watches and things like that. Yeah, how do you scale a design um, and make sure assistance supports something small like an Apple Watch or something that's bigger than you, like a kiosk? Okay, so we are running short, so I'm going to move forward. So the next class that I like to explain 
is a senior portfolio class, the last class. This is a specialized portfolio class helping students start their career as a UX or UI designer. I help them prepare their resume, design their portfolio website, and develop their case study videos, and also an offline leave behind. So uh, I can go to the file directly and I can show you here. This is one of the portfolio um, uh, file that students are working on. Everything is one place, same structure that you have all the pages. So start from the resume and then biography and they can establish their own branding and they can work on the wireframe to, um, to build the content and then work on their design based on a uh, wireframe, as you can see here. And um, this is another project. So project by project that they can uh, prepare the, um, the, the pages in Figma. And also they can prepare the case study presentation here. Now, I'd like to point out one unique thing about the pre uh, preparation. Portfolio is not about resume or website. There's a lot of different kind. Case study video, case study presentation is on, on another, one thing. And also we help them to prepare offline version of a portfolio. So when you meet with a person that you can leave something behind or you can easily send a PDF file. So uh, I just want to use this opportunity to quickly answer Marty uh, Mate, uh, Matey's questions. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but she's asking or he is asking whether these go into production and whether the developer's feedback gets into the consideration. For our certificate program, we do invite developers to come in to give feedback. And um, for BFA program, unfortunately, there's no budget. So sometimes we get our friends to come in, but not always required. And uh, so those classes don't go into production, but something like this portfolio website, yes. Portfolio website, they have to design it and executing it. So right here you see is a portfolio from one of our BFA senior Margaret. So she created her own creative profile and showcased her best work out of the school. Can you go into Barclay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is more of a UX class uh, or project. So she really focused on the process and the solution and uh, really talk about what they learn from each step. That's what we tell our student. It's not just that you do one through 10. You, whenever step that you take, every step you take, you have to talk about the learning, why you choose to use this methodology. So those are the important thing. So the next portfolio, so that one is from our BFA class. This one is from our UX US certificate program. So Stacy, uh, she was a visual designer for a long time. So she about 10 years or so, right? Mm -hmm. And then she took our class to transition her career into UX UI. So she really leveraged her visual design sensibility. Look how beautiful these color and things are. And she started to understand the purpose of micro interaction. So she enhanced her micro interaction building prototyping skill and really build this. And we're happy to share that Stacy right now is actually working as a UX UI designer at Google. So we're really happy that our program deliver results. So that is probably all the time that we have. And uh, thank you very much. Somebody ask and then talk about, oh, I need to take this class. So if you are interested, <laughs> our Creative Workforce of the Future info session is actually next Tuesday, May 18th and from 12 to 1 p.m. And we're really proud of what we have accomplished within three short years. We went from zero program to 14. And our alumni, that's a piece that we're really, uh, really happy about. They are really getting the results. And the link is over there. And I'm sure we, uh, Mickey will share some of this information with you later. <laughs>